Hey everyone, Dean Willett with the Real Estate Tube here with Matt Stigliano from San Antonio, Texas. And uh, Matt, how you doing this morning? Hey, not too bad. How you doing, Dean? Uh, doing great. And we want to talk this morning about new agents getting in the business. And maybe you're not a new agent. Maybe you've been in for a little while, but you're getting re, you know, restarted all over again and starting from square one. You know, where did you start? How did you get your leads? Uh, when I first started, I. Uh I tended to do uh, phone duty, which the phone wasn't ringing, so that didn't really work for me. Uh, you know, broker leads, you know, from the company website. Uh, I, th I think at first the, the biggest problem was that I didn't get that leads were important. Uh, I had no idea. Um, I, you know, I worked uh, the whole website and online and social media kind of circles and, you know, tried to build up some recognition there. But uh, little did I know, I was just kind of waiting for the phone to ring um, and just kind of spinning my wheels in a sense. So so at first, I, I had no idea, I guess, is the is the best answer. When you first got your license, you, you, you mentioned using online media. Is that where you generated or where you tried to generate your leads and how long did it take you to start producing leads? Um, well, I, I started I started blogging probably four months or so into my career um, and built and designed my website, you know, around that blog and um, then started using, you know, some of the social media. Twitter especially for me has been uh, kind of nice. Uh, just kind of jumped in and made myself known, I guess, was the biggest part of it. Uh, here in San Antonio, when I first got on Twitter, uh, most of the people that were on there were just basically, uh, we have Rackspace in town, big hosting company, and uh, they were all just geeks talking code back and forth. So I just kind of jumped into the middle of it and started chatting with them about anything and everything. Um, and, and as we, as a city, I guess, grew you know, our Twitter presence, um, I started started to meet more and more people and started to talk to them, and uh, Twitter's actually been good to me. I've, uh, I, I guess I've pulled in uh, three clients and uh, three referrals, so, you know, it's, it's not the, um, the solution to all your problems, but uh, by getting involved and becoming known, you know, people know me now as a realtor, whereas, you know, uh, when I first moved here, I didn't know anyone, I didn't have any friends. Uh, no family around, you know, so it was really difficult to just kind of walk around and say, hey, look at me, I'm a realtor, and I found that was a lot easier. Now, many people say, you know, the old saying, list to last in this business, you need to have listings to last long term. When you first got in the business, did you go straight after listings? Were you working with buyers? What did you try to work? Uh, in, the, in the very beginning, it was... Buyers, I mean, you know, if a listing came along, I would have jumped on it, but I wasn't pursuing them uh, uh, just because I didn't really have that confidence in myself. Like, I didn't know what to do once I had one. Uh, so it was probably about you know, six, seven months before I took my first listing, and it was one that I actively pursued. It was an expired listing, uh, and, you know, wound up, wound up talking to the owner. We got along. You know, I convinced him that, you know, there's some things that I think could be done, and you know, he he took that uh, faith in me, and we went with it, and you know, we did sell it. So I was pretty happy about that. Now, when you're going after expired listings, that sort of stuff, do you throw them back to your website or try to use your social media influence in any way with them in going after listing? Uh, well, when I started back then, I was just kind of sending almost a form letter. And, you know, it mentioned my website just like anybody, you know, would in any kind of um, correspondence with, with potential clients. But I didn't really push it. Um, just recently, I, I picked up a new listing, and we, we had, it was an expired listing. Um, the owner and I had spoken a little bit, and I said, well, you know, let me show you a few things. And that's where I used some of my blog posts. Uh, to kind of illustrate, and YouTube especially in this case, to illustrate what I had been doing for properties that I listed and even just general neighborhoods so that he could see, wait, 
okay, so I can Google this and find you, and you don't even have my listing yet? Because uh, I've done a lot about his neighborhood. So it definitely, once you, once you get the contact, that's the hardest part. Once you get that, you know, then you need to kind of feed everyone some of these uh, specific instances to kind of show them, like, you know, I'm not just anybody here. For a new agent, what advice would you give them as far as, you know, you mentioned that you're using YouTube now to build a presence and using your blog. What advice would you give a new agent getting the business as far as targeting what they want to accomplish? Uh, you know, I, I, I would, I would say target neighborhoods, uh, talk about neighborhoods, you know, um, what, what I, what I was doing was I was building a map on my site that has links to all these different neighborhoods that I've done video about, a blog post about, and you click on the link and it, you know, takes you to the relevant material, uh, whether it, you know, is just a, uh, little, 200 word blog post saying, you know, I like this neighborhood, it's pretty cool, check out, you know, some of the features of it, or, you know, a video of me walking around it and talking about the neighborhood, or even just some, you know, the static video, uh, static photo, not static, I guess, but the photo, like, video slideshows, and uh, people love them, I, you know, I still get compliments and comments about them saying, like, oh, you know, hey, that's my neighborhood. And it's not always, it doesn't always generate immediate business, but of course the SEO value in some of those is tremendous. And, you know, you've been blogging for quite a while, I believe. You know, I, I want to say I heard you say nine years? If you go back to my political blogging days, yeah, ten years. Now. Yeah, so, you know, you know that some of, the, some of the old posts that are floating around out there, you know, People are still reading them, and th that kind of power, when you start building up that, uh, that the ability for somebody to Google a neighborhood, because that's what people Google when they, you know, are thinking about housing. They're going to say, you know, hey, I want to live over in, you know, the heights of whatever, and they'll type it into Google and see what comes up. If you can come up, you know, first, second, third, that's a big, big deal. So by doing those kind of neighborhood concentrations, you're covering a, a wide area, you know, of X amount of homes, 100, 200, 300 homes, however big the neighborhood is. And you're also, you know, you're also as a new agent, you're learning about these neighborhoods that you may not have known about at all. You know, me being new to Texas, I didn't, I didn't even know which end was north, which end was south when I started. Now, that's a good discussion. When you're picking a neighborhood, do you have, do you just say, okay, I just want to work this neighborhood? Are you looking at something as far as the demographics, um, turnover for real estate, that sort of stuff when you're picking a neighborhood? Uh, when, I, when I first started, I just picked them based on, you know, hey, look, there's a neighborhood. I'm curious. And I would pull in and start taking photos. People probably think I'm crazy when they see me out there. Um, so it, it was it was a bit random. There was some... Uh, some choice, you know, uh, I liked the neighborhood for whatever reason. You know, it was a neighborhood I kind of wished I lived in. So at first, that's how it started. But, of course, I started thinking a little bit more uh, technically as time went on, and I said, well, why am I shooting photos of a, of a neighborhood where the, you know, the median price is $400,000 when those houses just aren't moving at the moment? You know, let me start looking at the the hundred and twenty to hundred and fifty thousand dollar neighborhoods. So you know, as I moved along, I got a little bit more specific. But at first, I just wanted uh, basically, you know, quantity over quality. Even though I, I wanted the quality, but you know, it was it was all about getting a massive amount of information as quickly as possible. Now, when I first started trying to implement, you know, social media, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff into my business. It was being sold as this is what will save your business. This is how you can build your business. What I find out personally, it, it's a great way to supplement, to keep in touch with clients in your sphere. But as far as building the business, it wasn't what it was being sold as. Are you finding that or are you finding you can build your business on that? I, I definitely think it was oversold by a lot of people, you know, it, and it even created a, a pretty good backlash at one point. I, I remember... Just every real estate agent I knew, 
was saying, this is garbage, it's worthless. Um, you know, and, and, and I would even say specifically Twitter. You know, everybody said, oh, you know, because you could send out your, your, your tweet about your new listing to 10 billion people at once, but nobody was reading those. And once people started thinking of it less as a broadcast medium and more of an interactive medium, uh, I, I think it started to get better. I, I do see the value in, you know, there are strangers out there who may not know what you do for a living, and because you tweeted out something about a listing or whatever, you know, they get to know that. There, there is some value in that, but it's also the same as standing on a street corner and shouting, hey, I'm a realtor. You may get one person that says, oh, wait, I'm selling my house. But chances are most people are just going to walk by you, drive by you, and ignore you because you're a screaming lunatic on the corner of the street. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think it was oversold, but I think now there's more of a, a concentration on thinking about the fact that it, it's a tool. It's like anything else. It, it's it's email. It's a fax back when, you know, I, you know I, I don't know how long you've been in real estate, um, but, you know, when people tell me that they didn't use fax machines, what in the world did you do? I You know, it, it boggles my mind to think about some of the tools that, you know, uh, the old listing books, you know, uh, searching through one of those for a house, I, I don't think I'd be a real estate agent. It, it would be too difficult that way. Right, exactly. Okay, somebody's getting in the business, and they are going to pick either Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or their blog to, to help build their business. Which one do you tell them to go with? Wow, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an awesome question. You know what? I, I would say your blog, and it was almost a tie between YouTube and your blog. I think I think your blog will get you noticed by Google a lot faster uh, because you, you've got, you know, searchable text. Um, YouTube, I think, is going to win out in the long run because you've got video. And, you know, I just watched your, your interview with, um, with Jason, and you were saying, you know, 10 of your listings are from, you know, people who said they saw your videos. Right. That's incredible. And I, I think it gives people a way to relate to you. They, you know, there's a face now. It's, it, you know, it's techno, techno, ah, I can't say the word, technological face-to-face, -face, basically. You know, I, I mean, uh, here we are talking, you know, and I feel like I'm hanging out with you right now. So I think people are going to relate to that more in the long run and be attracted to that. But I think for being a new agent or somebody just getting into these sorts of things, words are going to be your key because that's what Google's looking at right now. I, I, I think video, you know, because they're starting to look at video deeper and deeper every day. I, I think eventually blogs will almost be, uh, you know, more video than, than text. Okay, Matt. I have a client who's interested in buying a house in San Antonio. How do I send them to you to get hold of you? Phone number 210-646-HOME, H-O-M-E. Um, email, Matt, M-A-T-T, at R-E Rockstar, uh, dot com. Um, I, I don't usually hang out on Skype, but uh, R-E Rockstar is my Skype. You know, uh, I, it's something I need to use more of, actually. I, I'm loving Skype these days. All right, Matt, thanks for your time.